In Adobe Muse CC, you can go in and work with web fonts pretty easily. So as a matter of fact, I can go select text, go up to the text menu up here, and you'll see we have what are called web fonts, add web fonts. Now if I select that right there, these are a, I guess you could say a selection of what are called edge web fonts that are hosted fonts that you get to use. So these are fonts we don't have to worry about. We just pick and we say, okay, and we get to use them. They're in our list. Sometimes you may actually want to be able to use your own fonts though. If I come in here, you're gonna see self-hosted web fonts. You can add your own font files here. Muse will put them in the menu and then you can use them in, in your sites, just about any site, and it will make sure that they work. So these will get uploaded when you upload or publish your site, even if you export the HTML itself. Now, how do we get these fonts? I guess that's the question, right? You're looking over here and you can see that it's saying WAF, EOT, SVG, some really bizarre font files. This is not gonna grab an open type font, for instance, or a true type font, that type of thing. You need special fonts for this. So what you can do is you can go buy them uh, and or you can go to a, a website, something like Font Squirrel. This is a great uh, website for fonts. You'll see here that we can search for fonts and it tells you what you can use them for. You know, for web, for you know, open type font, for download for uh, your desktop, that type of thing. I'm gonna go in here and click on hot, for instance, and then scroll down a little bit and you'll see there's a bunch of them in here. Now, if you click on one of them, like open sans for, for instance, and I scroll down a bit, you're gonna see that, okay, well, this one is used for web. We can also sort by types of fonts if we want. We gotta make sure you can use it for web. And you'll typically see something called web font kit. If I click on that, and it'll show me this kit. These are the different fonts that are gonna be converted essentially or created and we can download this as what's called a kit. And you just click right here and you got it. It's pretty cool. And you gotta make sure of licensing that it appears. You see right here, the fonts license appears to allow you to use font embedding, that's great. But some fonts you choose, let me go back to home here, will not allow you to do that. Um, I'm probably gonna pick one that does, but I go to like Fire of Sands. You're gonna see right here, well, there's no web font kit. What you have to do is you actually have to generate it using the web font generator. So there's a lot of ways to get this. You can also purchase fonts that are used for the web and they will usually give you those fonts, but we need those fonts. So let me go out to my desktop here and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. Here's the, the zip that I just downloaded from Font Squirrel. And let me open it up and you're gonna see it's got web fonts right here and there's a whole bunch in here. Let me open this up and I've got regular right there. So you're gonna see it's got EOT, SVG, all the ones we need and it has a true type font right there, which we can use for, for uh, our design within Muse. So I'm gonna take this and drag it out just so I, I know where it is. I'm gonna put it on my desktop. We gotta be able to find that folder. So I'll go back over to Muse, go right here and say browse, go locate that folder with all those different fonts in it. There it is right there. It's gonna grab the EOT, the SVG, the WAF, and the true type is gonna be used for us to design within Muse. So if I click choose, now you wanna make sure you got all those. If you don't, you're gonna find it won't work very well in all browsers because all these fonts are for different browsers. Let's just say that. If I hover over, you're gonna see, well, there's where it's located. And I've actually moved these fonts before and it can still find them, kind of crazy. I'll say, all right, I, you can read that if you want. I'll click continue and there we go. Now you're gonna see that there are more options here. If I click on this little wrench. You can go in and if it doesn't, it didn't find a matching system font, like an open type font or a true type font, you can add it here if you want to and go find it. But it found the other files. If there is license information that comes with this font, a little text file, that kind of thing, you can paste it in here and it will appear in the code. And you can also put in what's called page view tracking code if you do like analytics or something like that. But we don't need to do that. All right, I'll click cancel. There we go, all good. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna select my font after it tells me that it's just been loaded here. And now from here on out on different sites, I can go in and there's my font. You can see recently used, I've got Open Sans. So I'll choose that and there we go. Now if I go and I save this for instance, and I'll go just go save this on my desktop real quick. There we go. And then I'll go out and maybe export it if I wanna do that. I'll find that it generates a font folder. So if you either go and publish this, it'll take the font and put it up there. If you go to export as HTML, or if you go and say something like, let's go ahead and upload to FTP host, it'll also take those fonts and send it with the files themselves. So it should work. And that's it. It's pretty cool, pretty easy, uh, pretty straightforward if you wanna use your own fonts in Muse.